Hey, what's up, guys? So, a bitch can't guess what I'm doing today. It's Sunday, so there's nothing open today. I can't go down to uh, my favorite. I can't go down to my favorite steel place and pick up some steel to try and repair that hinge on crystal. So uh, I got to looking yesterday and the uh, motor mount from this side is starting to droop from the weight. Um, I've been gonna weld a plate in uh, to strengthen that up. So I've been putting it off, but I decided I was just going to hurt. I've been putting it off, but I decided that I'd just go ahead and do it today since I really hadn't given much thought to what I'm going to do in the shop today. I need, I'm going to set you up and let you watch me do it. So let's uh, get it done. All right, so in my mind, In my mind, I see this being welded in here and this becoming the strength of these two. Well, this, this thing wants to weld by itself for some reason, so we're just going to hold it in our hand. Uh, not sure if you can see what I got going on here, but uh, I got a pry bar laid across the frame. And I'm prying up underneath that mount because when I, if you can see it, when I put weight on it, it squares that mount up. So I'm going to set this in there, put some weight down on it, get it square, run a little bead here, a little bead there, a little bead there, a little bead here, and uh, and see, um, see if I can get that done. Anyways, uh, let me get you a little closer. Okay, so that's about in the center. And this is a weird angle, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, as far as it goes, it looks pretty good, right? Blindly welding. And maybe it'll it'll hold. Let me see. Not quite ready to it's not quite ready. that'll hold it looks like it ought to let me look I mean you know it's not horrible for welding with your eyes closed and that's all I was doing just uh, welding with my eyes closed so uh, what I'll do now is I'll do some tacks on the other side just to make sure that it's uh, solid it's not gonna go anywhere and then I'll start marking this up what I want to do with it because again I'm gonna cut this off here square that up uh, Make it look like it's supposed to, I guess. Put one weld over here. Again, I'm not looking, just so you just so you know. And I'm not welding without a helmet on. Ready? Let's get a look. Because I know you don't believe that that even looks remotely good, but You know, it's not bad for welding with your eyes closed. I'm not even looking at it. 
So anyways, that should, uh, that should do its job of holding the weight up. Uh, you know, I'm not really a fabricator. I'm more of a stick it and weld it kind of guy, but I think it'll do the job. And I think once I, once I get it cut off and, uh, once I take it off the motor and get it cut down and, and trim it all up and make it look nice, you'll, you'll see what I was thinking. Again, I'm going to cut this off in this area. I'm going to taper this down nice to it, clean that all up. <clears throat> I'll be pretty much doing the same thing over here. Now, this this distance to the frame is a lot narrower than the other side, so this is actually stronger, uh, so it won't take quite as much bracing. So I'll probably come into this area, from this area in to here, and weld in another one of those pieces that I just did, but it'll be much smaller. And again, this one's gonna get cleaned up. I'll clean up all this rough cut, and I'll make this match the bracket. Um, this hole's a little bit off. I'll, uh, I'll weld this hole shut and redrill it. I'll cut this off square and I'll get a piece that fits here and the, that bolts in here and I'll weld the two together front and back and I'll TIG weld that so it'll be nice and strong. Uh, and I may even put a vertical brace or I may not. So every once in a while, it's good to just sit back and look over your project and kind of, you know, see what maybe you need to change. Uh, that's actually how I noticed that that mount was already sagging. Uh, I had the engine in here pretty square, I thought, but it looks like it, it rotated a little piece. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be perfect. This is not a drag car. Um, you know, this is a go to town, run through the drive through at, at McDonald's and grab soda water, or, you know, run through the Dairy Queen for an ice cream cone on a Saturday night. You know, you got to get those RPMs up. You got to have, you got to get more smoke off your tires than you're getting off your engine, or I, I think you, you just don't qualify. But anyhow, that's down the road a piece. Um, I really want to get this tr this engine running. I'm, I haven't really shown you some of the things that I discovered on this engine after I got it, but uh, we'll go over that stuff. I'll get the valve covers off and show you that there's some there's some damage up under there, uh, some some weather damage. So we'll get that uh, looked at. You know, if you guys want. Uh, you know to ask some questions in the comments section you know specifically towards you know what am I doing with this or how am I what are my plans for that I'll tell you I I think I'm gonna put duels in the front and I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put anywhere from a 38 to a 48 maybe even on up to a 50 inch uh, ag float rear tire um, it'll be you know, hopefully it'll be in the area of, you know, 100 inches wide. No, it, hopefully it'll be, you know, 24 or 30 or so inches wide and, you know, in the 40s range of tall. And it'll have uh, maybe a maybe a tractor lug or a, or a turf tire, you know, designed not to beat up the yard when you drive through it. I'm not really sure. Uh, those things are expensive. One of the things that I'm, I'm considering, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a Dodge Dually chassis. And uh, it's just, it's got the eight lug dually wheels on the back. I need to buy some sort of conversion adapter to change from the uh, eight lug to 10 lug, like on semis. Uh, and then try to figure out a, a wheel size, a tire size, a back spacing and all that stuff. So it'd be, you know, I want it to look good. Um, so anyways, uh, I don't know what I'm really going to do with the rest of this video maybe I'll get the valve covers off and start polishing some stuff up or uh, maybe I won't we'll have to see how it goes anyways let's continue
Yeah, that looks pretty good. Trim that off, rounded that corner. Now I'll drill and put a bolt in there. I'm not gonna do it right now because there's a hole under the frame that's punched out. It's like this, only a little bigger. So uh, I'll support the engine, take this off. We'll cut that off just above those bolts. It's supposed to look like this. You see there's some corrosion here. And this one gets pretty bad and it's it's pretty bad up in the push rod area. So I think we'll take that one off. And uh, also I think that I think this one, yeah, this one has a stuck injector. So we're gonna we'll take these fuel lines off. We'll take this. This is called a drone, we'll take that off. We'll put the injector out clean this up, put a new injector in, um, clean this drone up, put that back on, clean this push rod. Okay, I'll try that for a little bit. Moved out of the way. So, right down in this area, if you can see these right here. This uh, basically is a it's a tunnel for oil pressure to flow from one of them to the other. And there's a little seal in there. So we're not gonna lift this off. We're gonna take these two bolts out. And uh, then I'm going to loosen the nut and move it away from the drone. And uh, I did buy some seals just in case.
loosen up the jam nut and then walk the uh, bolt in and then between the bolt and the drone this is a drone this is like a master and these are drones the master has a solenoid on it uh, when you trip the solenoid it puts oil pressure into the master and out to the drones and then it pushes the exhaust valves open and that's that Wah, noise you hear so here's the drone see how nasty that thing is so I do have new ones see that nasty I have new ones um, I have a new one I think I have a new drone so I'm gonna clean this one up and uh, see if I can save it okay now these feel like they're a little bit uh, sensitive so I'm gonna try and stay away from those for the most part Cleans up pretty good, actually. Wire wheel moth. Oh uh, yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely some rust on those. So what I may do is I may change these. I've got, I got one drone and two masters. I may take, uh, I may take these off of one of the masters and make it into a drone. Not really sure what. Uh, what I'm going to be able to do with it. Pretty gross. No matter how you look at it. Pretty nasty. So let me see if I can get those lines off. All right, so this tool is a Detroit Diesel fuel injector line tool. And we'll see if that's actual, if that's true or not. Appears to be. only use it to break it loose you know you can't go all the way around obviously and this little rubber clip right here for this wire you have to uh, weeds that off of there so we we'll use this we'll use this weed wrench right here and uh, yep, that didn't do anything so This worked just fine to weed that wrench, weed that little rubber grommet off. Just broke it right off there, so that's good. Now we don't have to mess with it anymore. And once I get these uh, lines off, then I'm going to find a little plastic cap to put over the over the ends of that because there'll be a lot of rust flying around in here in a second. I don't want to get it in the fuel system. Now these lines are special. Uh, they're bent special for the for the Jake. You see how they go around the the Jake brake unit itself and uh the ones that come factory are just straight lines. So these are special, bent special. 
I don't think you can just make them, you have to buy them. So we're gonna be, we're gonna treat them good. There's this piston looking feller right here. And uh, if that wasn't there, I could just roll this valve train right out of the way. But since that's there, I don't, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with it. Um, I have no idea what it is, even I've never seen one before. And uh, we'll figure out what it is some other time. Maybe when we put it back together. Uh, you're not, you don't understand. It's a good thing to do is stop and, uh, you know, give it a look online and see if you can figure out what that, what that may or may not be. Because, you know, you don't want to get something uh, crazy out of adjustment or something. But, you know, for me, I'm just going to go for it. Because it seems like that makes perfect sense. And then, yeah, can't do nothing. Well, that is definitely full of oil. So, that's super interesting that that piston is. That whatever this is, is full of oil. Why? I don't know what this is. Oh, that's what holds the injector down. It's the injector clamp. And then I can <coughs> open, oops. And then I get in there and uh, scrape and vacuum. And this injector needs to come out. But what, what makes these, what keeps these in there? It doesn't make sense. It can't turn it. Well, there's a spring in there. I hear it doing its thing. Um, and that spring holds it down on the uh, on the camshaft. Oh yeah, that's so nasty. Yeah, looks like I can squeeze on a on a snap ring. Maybe pull this whole piece out of there. This will be, this going to be impossible to put back together. Just so you know. Okay. All right. There it is. That's what it looks like in there. There's a spring. There's this thing. There's this thing. There's this thing. That's going to be... A real pain in the ass to get back together. Something, some special tool to push this thing down. That's a lot of spring. Uh, maybe some sort of install tool that I'm gonna need. But for now, I'm gonna take this clip off, put it up here in the pile, and uh, take this over to the, to the wire wheel and see what happens. All right, so, you know what, actually, it just feels fine. Um, this push rod's fine. I may take this nut loose and make sure that that uh, adjuster's working just fine. But I think for the most part, this thing will this will live. We we'll just got to get the rest of them out and then figure out a way to get these back in, get that hole cleaned out and get these back in. Okay, this is my parts washer. 
basically it's a five gallon bucket O diesel. And uh, you know, diesel's uh, real good at cleaning. Uh, you know, I prefer to use mineral spirits when I'm, when I'm working with uh, breeze barts, but diesel works really good. And if, you know, I have an abundance of it. Uh, so for the most part, that's what I used to do all my cleaning. If you can see in there, that hole down there that goes down to the cam and you see all that crap around there i'm going to try and get that out of there without getting it down in that hole and uh do the same take this one out and this one out and uh clean that up and then i'll have to do the same for those down there but uh for now this is super hard to, to film actually so i'm going to uh i'm just going to keep you right where you're at you can see kind of in there what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just gonna get a quick rough feel of that hole. It's uh, pretty gross. There's a lot of rust and carbon and oil coke. You know, I'm guessing, I don't know, I'm guessing this thing idled most of its life being in, it's out of a fire truck. And people say that idle in Detroit is the worst thing you could do to it. Um, yeah, those valve springs look fine. Uh, this looks fine. Uh, I'll spray this. I, I sure already sprayed this all down with... with uh, with breakaway um so basically now it's just a matter of getting these out i'll take this one out uh, i may have to do those at the same time because i can't get this if uh if i could get this rod let me see if i can get this rod nope it's uh it's fixed on this outside one um and i don't know no. Doesn't make sense why though, because that bolt goes through that shaft. I'm gonna tap on it a little. Because if I get that rod to go, if I get that off and get that rod to come out, I could do one at a time and clean them all up individually and then put it all back together and clean these bridges and get this injector out, clean up this hole, get this hole done with all that out. Get this injector out. I've got a couple new injectors. I'll stick a new injector in there and uh You know, this side me, I may just be done with this side at that point. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let me tap on that. That's not going to move. I don't see anything that holds it on there. Um, It would be really nice to just pull that out and do one of those at a time. Okay. I got that off. And then I don't 
don't know. Yeah, it sucks, but I can't get that. It won't go enough to get these apart. And that sucks. So I didn't win. I'm gonna go and wire with us. I'll be right back. So I know we've probably been over this before, but you want to bar this engine over with a with a ratchet because the Detroit will start with the smallest amount of oil in the cylinder, and it it will kick back. And if you're using a breaker bar, it will break something of yours. So. Uh, Yeah, there was a lot of pressure on that. So I just took a bunch of pressure off that valve. So let's see if I can get that off there now. So let's see. I think I can push this bar out. No, no, I can take this one out. So this is what it looks like. And I'm going to go over and wire wheel it and uh, I'll be back there it is another rusted out piece I'll be back Seems like uh, wouldn't hurt anything to hose it all down with a little bit of lube. You know, there's a little, little gritty, just a little bit of gritty in there. Uh, and you know, the oil pan is going to be full of all kinds of crap, so we'll drain, we'll, we'll flush that out, maybe with some diesel fuel. And, uh, See what happens. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, really? Wrench. So, we take and we run that up against, and then tighten this. Okay, let's go do it. If I did that wrong, just be sure to tell me. Seems fine. Put this valve cover on.
So anyways, guys, uh, man, it's been a long day. Appreciate you hanging out with me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you.